Okay. Welcome to PCA Community Access Board of Directors meeting, Tuesday, March 15th, 2016. Can we have the secretary call roll? Yes. Cindy Thomas. Kathy Rivas. Present. Neil Fishman. Here. Mark Carmillo. Check. Kim Williamson. Here. John's here. Uh -huh. I'm here. Shane Crow here. That's Cindy. 610. Yes, thank you. Seeing no uh, public comment, we'll continue on from there. Um, do any of the directors have comments or announcements that they'd like to make? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is my last meeting, but I have to, to leave the board. Uh, so it's either my last or next to last. Uh, just because I'm tied up with two other major boards. I'm, I'm uh, the president now of uh, Sonoma County Conservation Action, and I'm going to be the chair of the Sonoma Land Trust next year. And I'm just getting too tied up, and I'm also starting to do some consulting work, and I just can't do it anymore. So it's been great, and I thank you for it, and everybody support PCA, and I'm here for all the events and fundraisers and all of that. So uh, anyway, just wanted to make that announcement. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, although I did did know that you mentioned that yeah. the last meeting. Can you send a announcement? I will email announce for that. If I, I will send an email. Okay. I gotta make the same announcement. Then okay. this is my last You're meeting. You're announcing that Neil's leaving too? No, <laughs> I'm announcing that I'm leaving. I'm I'm leaving in April to go to Idaho, and I don't know for sure when I'll be back. So I don't think it's fair for the board to um, have to put up with, you know me not here to, to do my job. I'm going to send you a list, John, of uh, people I, I could, could replace well, me. Yeah. Um, but I think I'll, and I'll send your resignation letter. I'm sorry, but I have to do it. We're sorry too. Yeah, I'm sorry you have to go to Idaho. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, That's Idaho's family. okay. It's not going to be a fun <coughs> trip, so we'll see. Well, thank you for all you've done so far at this point. I've had fun, but I just can't be reliable, so I feel bad about it, so. Well, with regret, we accept both of your resignations. I'm not dropping out. Yay. That's good. Now that you've got all the power. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As far as I know, you're stuck with me. Well, that's <coughs> that's good. <coughs> Can um, I have somebody make a motion to accept the um, no, or approve the agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll do that. I'll second. February 16, 2016, Board of Directors meeting. There's, has everyone had a chance mm -hmm. to look at those? I move to approve. I'll second that. So, do we have a vote on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Number six is the treasurer's report. Board of February 2016 financial statement. Yeah, you know, just briefly, uh, everything looks. We are actually uh, brought in more money than budget and spent less money than budget last month. So we we are on track and everything looks fine. Uh, unless John, do you have more no. detail on that? No, no, it, you know that is the fluctuation. Yeah. You pay all the insurance at one part, you right. look under, and then it comes back up again. But yes, it's it's been good, and we had. Uh, we did have um, a little um, snag with City Hall. Um, they overlooked sending us the AT&T check. Um, and then it took me a while to find out who to talk to. Kim was very helpful. And we got the check today. So our AT&T uh, peg fees for October, November, December came in. And actually were higher than the previous quarter. Previous quarter was 13378 
and this quarter was, or the quarter we just got paid for was 13,719. That's a good sign. So that's a good sign, uh, although we have um, some concerns about AT&T. There's rumblings in the, uh, in the industry that they're gonna withdraw from delivering TV by end of next year. So if you calculate four quarters at 13,000, that's 40, 52,000 that we might not have in our budget. Unless they move to Comcast. And if those subscribers move to Comcast, if they go to Dish, we're out of luck, and uh, if the technology changes and they get it from the light bulb, <laughs> that's a different kit plug. But that's, that's a... If they get it from the light bulb, PG&E will have to have a Dish to franchise. Okay, that's interesting. Because they use the right of way. Okay. Okay. That's our financial report. Do we need to move to accept that report? No, we don't. Okay. Um, then John, executive director's report. Well, let's see. We've got the envelope leave, but that's on the agenda, so I won't go into the details, except that I was really thrilled. Uh, it was a very exciting uh, night. Uh, so we missed you, Mark and Kim. The week prior was uh, horrendous. Uh, I had the programs printed three times. And actually, I had trouble with the printers, too, and I didn't get it right for the last time. So I guess there was a purpose. Yeah. It, was a it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was you know, fun. And I think everybody who went had a lot of fun. I've had a lot of compliments. Uh, and we're running into people who regret missing it after they've heard about it. Um, but that, well, we'll get into the end of that details because we had a meeting last night that we can report on for those of you who weren't there and uh, it's on the agenda. Uh, we did have a, I don't, I don't know if it Kim, it was like uh, last last week we got hacked. Our website was taken over by a uh, unidentified flying weirdo. Um, a hacker. A hacker. It was the, actually technically it was defaced. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So our, our website was overtaken by some I did a little research on the name he used, uh, Algerian um, terrorist. <laughs> it's hard to tell. But uh, he put up a wrapper and laughed at us. And uh, Thomas found it when he went on to check the schedule. Um, <laughs> Is that because of WordPress, basically? Well, um, Kim might know more than it's WordPress. WordPress? Mm -hmm. Or is it the hosting Did service? Did the camera run? Pardon? The camera's run. Right. You'll prefer to discuss security on private. Yeah, okay. so we'll, the security we'll do, deal with offline. But we were uh, super uh, blessed. I'd like to nominate um, Stephanie for uh, eternal heroic status because mm -hmm. she jumped in on a day off uh, on Wednesday. Uh, she was in Santa Rosa. She was here within hours. She worked like almost 24 hours. And within 24 hours, she had solved the problem. She, how did she do it? Was she found the, the she, guy, or did she was able to knock out her head screen? She mm -hmm. went in and she she corrected the uh, she tracked down the errors. She found what she needed to do to get our page back up. Uh, she was concerned about how deep the penetration went, so she did. Uh, she shut down all the computers and went through um, uh, virus searches twice because she went through a virus search and then got a new virus searcher and put it in and then went through it again. Um, but that wasn't part of the website hack. No, but it was part of her response to that penetration. The website hack, uh, we didn't know if it went into our personal computers or into our email. And just to say that Stephanie put us all back in shape and it gave us a, a very clear warning to upgrade the whole uh, security issue. And Kim has been consulting with uh, Stephanie on that and we've, uh, we've accomplished a lot. You know, it's like being um, violated. It's not a, it was a strange couple of days. Hmm. Um, let's see, community outreach. Um, we, I remember, I mean, you may recall that months ago I talked about hooking up with the Emergency Operations Center and we were gonna do a Meet Your EOC. Uh, we had a, we had a sterling uh, volunteer member, uh, Shadi, uh, you probably all met her, Shadi. She helped out with one of our fun our meals, our fundraising events, or not from uh, Chamber Mixer, I believe. Uh, she got together with uh, Jeff from the fire department and they put together a really, she, she made a really neat little video. She's thrilled with it, it's on the air. Um, we made a, a DVD for him and it's 
on the YouTube. Great. So that was a great success. Um, the YouTube is available. If you go to if you go to our website and you find the YouTube channel, click on that and go to the YouTube channel. It should be in the most recently posted, but you can always go to videos and it'll be up at the top. It's the EOC special. It's also airing on channel 27 at 5 a.m., 1 p.m., and 9 p.m. on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. And we're working on the Lumicon videos. That was the big event that the library put on. A uh, full day event with kids and the comic books and role playing. And uh, we have a young uh, intern who's been doing great editing on that. Did we actually video that or did somebody yeah. else? We had, we had a team there. Uh, and we were working with the Kennewick kids that came here for a mm -hmm. tour at one point. And then the Aquas nonprofit mixer, that, um, I didn't, I wasn't able to go to that. I had another event. What was that the night of the, um, <laughs> the hack? <laughs> At any rate, I didn't go. I was wondering if anybody else did go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, s Kathy sent it. No, no, Rachel sent us a reminder saying, Rachel, are we going to this? Oh, I thought Cindy sent it. Go at the library. It was at the library. Yeah, I was, was going to go. Yeah, on it's the kind of thing we should support. Uh, and we have been a co-host to this. This one had plenty of co-hosts. They didn't need us to, to chip in, but it, it's a good it's a good mixer for nonprofit community in Petaluma to meet and uh, um, generate synergy in the nonprofit community. Um, City Hall upgrade. Um, we're moving forward with that. Um, we did put in the four new cameras. Uh, they need to be repositioned in a more aesthetic uh, mounting system. Um, the board has already authorized 63000 for the City Hall upgrade. We spent 14000 on the cameras, um, which leaves us with 49000 left for the servers and the actual mixing board and the internal. And um, Stephanie's been working with Telview, the company we'd like to go with. We've got estimates now of um, actually 34000 to to finish it off. We have two options. One option would give us the, the streaming capacity immediately so that we can have a fourth channel on our website to stream selected. We, have, we, we will have a server that can store our files of our programs and it has four outs. We need three of those for our three channels. The fourth one could go directly to the internet, but that would cost another $10,000. And that's why I asked for two estimates, one with and one without. So we're looking at either 34000 or 44000 both under the, the budget. But my recommendation is that we don't go immediately to the streaming online. Can it be added later? Yes, it can. Later. How much will that cost, <coughs> though, to add it later? The 10000 It'll be the 10000 mm -hmm. So it'll be the it, same. So it's basically just a license change. Yeah. And I, the, the, the reasoning is uh, we're so close to getting the radio up, that should come before streaming on the web. And I don't know the full cost, so that extra ten thousand dollars could be useful in a pinch with the radio. So when we show city hall meetings on the web, do they come in at a higher def than they do if they're on the, our, our TV channel? We're not high def on TV, right? But so, but oh, these the cameras we're getting, I assume, are high def cameras, and we're yes. recording in high def. Do we somehow stream to? The internet in high def as no, opposed to we're not streaming to the internet oh we're not we're streaming at all the granicus city we do stream you do yeah. and they're really downscaled okay so they're, they're not high, high it's, def it's, it's 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 uh, down basically downscaled for purposes of speed yeah and the uh, storage space right you remember that we're just basically storing a meeting of a, the, the record of a meeting not not for to see to see right. how good you know, to see how good your hairstyle looks right right but for john's Right, but if but you know there is a beyond that. I mean, for mm -hmm. for storing them as minutes, that makes a lot of sense. But you know, to stream them on the internet for public consumption, you probably want the bells and whistles. I mean, politicians, people dress, perform the way they perform, and you probably want to mm -hmm. see that in all its glory, or lack thereof. Well, they're not supposed to perform in city meeting. <laughs> and. You can watch. Well, oh, I'm sorry if I misspoke. <laughs> you can watch the um, 
all the city meetings, all of our Channel 28, you can watch online or on the city mm -hmm. website. Yeah, Either cool. live when it's being broadcast or uh, you can call it up on demand. So 28 is already uh, streaming online. Or the content that goes on 28 is streamed yeah. from the city's, from, from our um, storage. We have a YouTube channel also. Who? The city. Don't need one. Don't need right it's, it's stored. It's, a, it's an alternate. Yeah, we do. We have several. Our YouTube channel is, because that streams in 1080. Mm -hmm. YouTube does. Or it can. Yeah, we put our PCA board meetings on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that's very high, high quality. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I better fix my hair. Nobody watches <laughs> that. I should shave before I come down here. I don't think they get any <laughs> hits, do they? Like one or that's two. good to know. <laughs> when, when it watches them all. Oh, really? Yeah, when you can't sleep at night, it's great. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> I know somebody said, I saw you on TV there. That might you saw me on TV there. What is it? You know what I tell people? I said, you've got to get a life. <laughs> <laughs> so they quit telling me. Okay, let me get back to my report here. So we talked about City Hall upgrade, and we're definitely going to go with the 34,000, and I'll set that into motion. The next problem with that is finding a period when the city is having fewest meetings. That's usually the beginning of the summer. There's a lot of cancellations in the summer of meetings. So we'll, we'll schedule that, but we will go forward with ordering the equipment. How long, what is the downtime? The downtime, well, it took us almost two weeks to put the cameras ready. That should have been a week. Uh, the downtime for this, we will have to shut off the, the channels. Um, and the key one, we can, we can shut down 28, which has the city's meetings in a period where there's no meetings, and then get that back on and then rotate to the others. Downtime could be two to three weeks. Not downtime, but actually working on getting it all worked out and tested. And, um, re rearranging the, uh, the, the booth, which is very tight. We wanted to get rid of a ventilating channel, but we couldn't, so then it got pipey. Um, the radio is moving forward. Um, we're, now down, we're now moving through the MOU process with the JC, and I did have a connection with Maggie, uh, Neil's sister-in-law, oh, on the board at the JC, and she was at the fundraiser. She took me aside and said that the board is thrilled with the idea. Oh, of having good. Radio. So, I have not lobbied my sister-in-law. Uh, no, everyone. She, she took me. She was very happy to, to communicate that. Oh, good. Um, there are, you know, right now the the JC has a committee that prepares the proposition for the board. And they're going through it now, and that's more technical. Uh, how far, um, and how many people are near the antenna, where's the antenna going to be? We've got a location for the antenna. We need to get an architectural drawing of it, all those processes. And Rob's been really great. Um, he's been working with the, the city uh, planning commission as to uh, limited use. Is planning division. Planning division. Yes. Limited, limited use. Yeah, limited use. Special so. use permit, is that? Yeah. Is that what he's doing? I was just going to ask for that. Yeah, that's part of it. Let me see if I have that email here. Um, conditional use permit? Conditional use. Conditional use. So interestingly, uh, some friends of mine live in Sebastopol, and uh, the property next to them is going to be, they're trying to put up a 70-foot antenna for their nonprofit radio station, and the neighborhood is up in arms against it. It's, it's a piece of property the city of, Sebastopol owns, but it's in uh, it's in the county. The the land is in the county. The city owns it. I forget under whose planning it, it it's put yeah. up, but uh, it's it's got them crazed in, in Sebastopol. I, I assume we don't have any such issues on a college campus uh, or. Well, the from what I understand is the, the school systems tend to not. Uh, be subject to some of the city regulations, mm. although it is in the city limits. But starting. So those are the questions we're yeah. trying to get answered. And uh, uh, Rob mm, just had know. a conversation with his friend Phil Boyle. Does that ring a bell? Really? Yeah. Rob Pardon? is a good friend with Phil, who's now at. Uh, he was in San Antonio last I heard. I think he's in Alameda now. So he's, he's, yeah. And they've been talking, and Phil contacted Tiffany at the Petaluma Planning Department. Information is if San Rosa JC constructs something that it owns 100%, then the permitting process would go through Sacramento. If it is a joint mm -hmm. venture, as mm -hmm. this is, because we own the equipment and pay for the construction, permitting goes through the city. 
was conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. And we, we could go up to 11000 which is more than the equipment would cost. But we, we, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We will need a structural engineer, and Craig Spalt was suggested. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one. Because there's a couple of XAB employees. We don't need an architect to draw the plans. Um, no, not subject to CEQA because it's, it's mm -hmm. a small, small project. What we're talking about is they've got a building in the back of the campus. Um, we would uh, dig a hole, lay a cement base, run an antenna up right next to the building, which could be joined to the building, and right. it would probably just go right over the top. So that's what we have to give a sketch so that the JC people can see what we're talking about. And as for getting neighborhood response, um, the planning department would um, has a process for that, but we might do it ourselves. It, it's suggested here that perhaps we would have a postcard sent out to the people in the vicinity. Is that required for conditional use? I don't know. I don't know either, but... Um, Why do you... I don't work in planning anymore. Well, this is what Neil was just saying, that the community can be disturbed by having an antenna uh, pop yeah, up yeah, in, their, in their neighborhood. What I'm asking is why <coughs> do you have to have a conditional use? Have they told you why? Well, um, you me. No. I'm the one that said go talk to planning. <laughs> I can't, well, I, I don't know that much about it, but I, I, I just don't understand why they have to. Well, I'll take the question, and we, ha you know, we haven't done it. We're still exploring the possibility that we need to do it, and, and at this point, we think we do, but we'd sure like to avoid it if we can. So we'll explore. Yeah. That. We'll explore that. Um, the next step would be a, play, um, a field meeting with uh, Gary from the JC, who's preparing the, the proposition for the board, uh, and an artist, and uh, Rob and I go out there with Zach and look at what we're talking about, and put all the pieces together to take to. San Jose JC border. What is the time frame we're talking about for this? Um, our 18 months of license to build expires in June, and we can request another 18 months. But I'm well, I'm targeting June to have something on the wall. So we we will be doing something with some of this at least. Oh, we're doing yeah, we're we're okay. we're doing this um, as we speak. Okay. It, it's moving, but it's slow at the JC and and connecting all these pieces. We've got a consultant in um, in Portland that Zach was working with. We have to reconnect with him and get some information. Um, Zach is very busy. That's why it's very good to have Rob. He's holding all the pieces and moving it forward. Do, does the JC have a, a media program that, that does the type of stuff we do? They have a media program, and they would be very mm -hmm. interested in having a radio curriculum. But they, have, but they can't offer it as a curriculum credited course without having a studio. So. I mean, I mean it, was, it just hit me that, you know, if because of what we do here and, and we've got professionals who work here, we pay money to be here. I wonder if there was any way we could set up our shop, you know, when our lease expires at the JC and, in effect, run a, you know, that, so that everything we have here could be used by the JC and their media program. Maybe the people here could help in teaching media classes and in sort of a a barter system and reduce our costs. That's an option, but at this point, um, it's too much to put on the JC's table. They don't right. have that, and we've designed the MOU in two phases. First is they don't have the space, meaning they don't have a room we can. They, yeah, and they don't. They haven't moved right. to offer that as a curriculum, hire an instructor, put it into the program. Right. They are interested in it, so we designed the MOU with two phases. The first phase is to install the to install our antenna on their property, and. Uh, get it up so that we can run it from our studio. The next phase would be uh, they develop a studio on campus. The idea of partnership is open all the way through. Um, they would have access to broadcast stuff on the antenna prior to phase two. If they wanted to, we would advertise, you know. The partnership is there. And right now it's the um, getting the hardware installed and finding out who the players are and then working with them in the future. They could certainly have students come over here and use it, and we facilitate all sorts of uh, uh, partnership benefits. Um, I just had two more little items that weren't on my list, but um, the Butter and Eggs fundraiser is at Loganitas on March 29th at 5.30. I think that's a Tuesday. 
Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then one oddball thing, we don't, I don't want to talk about it too much because we kind of vetoed it, but the landlord has been having trouble renting the back area. And they came to us with an option saying uh, they could easily rent the other side because it's got a door on the sidewalk and it's smaller. It's, it's they could rent that. So they were wondering if we wanted to trade <laughs> that for that back. The back is much bigger. Uh, I, I don't think we could afford much more right now, especially with all this, this moving around. But uh, we've been exploring the option. I know that you and Cindy looked back at that. And, uh, and they say trade. Trade straight across or trade? Across? If it was a straight across trade, it would be very interesting. You know, if the price went up a lot, then I don't think we could do it for the same right. reasons we already canceled right. it. But they are in a bind where they're just not renting it. It's too awkward of a space. They have to go down that alleyway. You know, if people came in here, walked into a radio station, and then we got the studio back there, and we've got our main you know, running the operation here, and then you go in the back, uh, it's a big space. You could store equipment it's there. It's a nice space. It's, we could have, um, I almost see it as kind of a, a real media center where other nonprofits in Petaluma could rent space from us and have mm-hmm. an office back there. So it's kind of a hub, kind of a, an art center for technological maybe work and those I'd kind of I'd be very things. interested to see what their thought is did, did they, What kind of a trade did they say? Or right. do you not it was very vague. They just said, we could rent that a lot more if you wanted if we wanted to close this off and put you back there. We'd be interested to talk about it. Hmm. So I'm getting enough interest to talk more about right. it. So I will pursue that. But certainly if it has a budgetary right. bottom line. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you, John. Great. I see nothing on the consent calendar. And number nine, reports of committees. Um, I don't believe any of these committees have met. I don't think so. Okay. And we can go to 10 old business. A discussion only of the signature fundraising event. Seeing that these were both, um, Cindy, do we need to? Well, um, Neil had a question about the event, and uh, we can discuss it. It's only discussion. We're not making decisions. So I think we could. Well, I just want to see what the bottom line is of the whole thing. I mean, yeah, I made a com- Did we com- make money? Did we lose money? Uh, um, we made about three hundred dollars. Here's the. Three hundred dollars. All told. Here's the. We didn't lose money. We didn't lose money. Good news. <laughs> considering that, right? Yeah. yeah. And but all the were figures aren't completely finished yeah, that's yet. That's true. Yeah, they're, we're still negotiating how much we pay the mystic, and uh, and we learned a lot. You, know, you can uh, we we knew going in that it was a heavy learning curve, and we didn't know what we were doing, <laughs> and we were meeting weekly for a long time. A lot of investment. I thought the. Uh, Building the baskets, getting the donations was a stellar job. We, we got A plus on that. Um, no, really, Rachel gets A plus on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh, Rachel's you, you the did one. great, and Neil did a lot. Hey, I know. broke my back lugging those candies chocolate. around. Yeah. And Obi Wan, you got you know, everybody. That Obi Wan was a, a fabulous. It was. For the yeah. man that won it, was, was thrilled. thrilled. Oh, oh, was he thrilled? He was thrilled. Oh, great. Thrilled. You know. Honestly, we uh, we should have done a silent auction if we could have, yes. and because that would have brought us probably probably would have made a couple of grand on a silent mm-hmm. auction, even with the crowd that was there. But as it was, I mean, I think it was fine for the for the first year. It would have been better as a raffle had somebody <laughs> figured it out or earlier. But you mm-hmm. know, we made some money on it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the other one that I was I've been concerned on personally is the is the drink tickets and the fact that, um, you know, you were going to take the the tickets out of the the VIP. I I would wanted to put them back in. Somehow I won the argument. All the, uh, right. you know, and and I, and it and, but and it was just tough because, in a way, a lot of my family was there, and so they got the benefit of a cheaper ticket. Um, and I'm feeling kind of responsible, like I should plunk in a, you know, some additional. Right. And, I, and I, I intend to do that when my house sells. 
You started to say something. Well, I wanted, I just wanted to ask a question. Did we film it? Did we video it? Is it going to be on the website? No, uh, Jim took a lot of photographs, and we were putting a video of the photographs. We're doing a slideshow of okay. the photographs. Yeah, th we had cameras there, but we didn't Nobody have anybody the there at the time yeah. to pick them up. And what, what's really and that's, that, that, that's the kind of work that... That's a shame. Plus, it's a little tricky it's with filming shame. what you would have filmed. Yeah. yeah. type of activity. We, you know, we, we flew out of the box, and yeah. uh, we were moving tables to, to deal with people who were coming out and wanted to sit up front, and uh, I was running Tom at the stage, and... You know, the, the I, we lost the, the raffle. We uh, we had a, a bucket for the silver thing there for donations. We made $250 in the donations. Mm -hmm. If we had about 80 people, and if each one of them had bought a $10 package of raffle tickets, that would have been 800. If they bought the 20, 25 tickets for $20, that would have been 1600. It still would have not come close to the four thousand dollars worth of material that we were giving. Well, them. And, and a lot of people wouldn't have bought tickets because they'd already put out the seventy-five bucks. And yeah. You know, so it's, who, who we, knows? we lost that, but there are variations. Yes, everybody agreed last night. I think we would have done well with a silent auction. Yeah, I think even with people paying seventy-five dollars, they would have gone. I think they the would have gone for the silent yeah, auction. They would have made a couple yeah. thousand at least. And Tom was having trouble with fourteen baskets to give away. Actually, it worked out pretty well with the commercial breaks. Yeah. It came down. It came right down to the wire, and it kind of cum culminated. Yeah. And the last one was a was a joy to give away. The two nights at the hotel with the opening night at the oh yeah, yeah. that was the last one. And yeah, uh, and the people were thrilled. And the way it worked, well, it was real fun. everybody was a winner. It was like the, the opening the envelope, yeah, and the people <laughs> in the audience got yeah. that thrill. Yeah. yeah, So that paid off, and we got great press. Press Democrat came, did an interview mm -hmm. with Cindy and I, and they had it on the on the web that night. I got my picture in the paper in a tuxedo. Uh. <laughs> That's worth a lot. <laughs> the drink thing was different because we had worked out a plan where we had three dollar tickets, which was reasonable. We were very logical, and it wasn't a lot of money. Three dollar tickets in three different levels, based um, on a five dollar drink. Yeah, and then we found out that week that uh, the Mystic Theater had changed their drink prices. And our ticket idea went out the window. And we made a quick decision to go to $5 tickets to try to keep the thing alive. And that's what you, you vetoed. Okay, that got I didn't veto it. I strongly argued for it and somehow won the argument. <laughs> well, I wasn't, for me, it wasn't an argument. It was yeah. a decision to make at that spot. And yeah. I, didn't, I was worried more about the stage performance of yeah. Tom. So I just said, and I, and I was sympathetic to your position because you brought a lot of your family members there. And if they got, and, what happened was we just turned all the, the bar over to the Mystic. And their yeah. prices were high. So we had the same problem. People were complaining about the, the cost of drink. Right, and, but they about two they beers they they'd have complained a lot more had we charged them 10 bucks a drink. That was my concern. Yeah. But we, we had no intake on the bar. So we lost money there. But that's another way we need to either need to be more in control of the bar or we need to, we need to think that one through. So that's for the next time. Um, could I give you the, uh, you can take that if you want, there's an extra copy. Um, well, I think talking about the fundraiser, um, that we're in a serious position right now. We just lost two board members. Mm -hmm. We have four board members left. Plus, if, if we hadn't had staff to support us through this, we'd have never made it. We'd have never made it. And with a couple of other people that stepped in as volunteers, so I think that we need to seriously consider, as a board, those of us that are left on the board, as to what do we want to do? What do we want to support? To do it again or not to do it again? Yeah. Well, I think it would be a shame to not be able to do it again because I think we established something. But I also think that it has to, we have to be all in agreement and be able to participate or it doesn't it, it just isn't gonna work. Well if you do it again, um, maybe whether consider rather than all or nothing, consider um, planning it but not trying to execute it yourselves. Consider hiring somebody to execute it. If you can get a fairly good price on it, 
she might be able to make some money with it that way. I mean, I, I think if you went to the right planner and said, we'd like to make this amount of money on this, and here's the plan, this is what we've decided to do, and they could tell you that won't work, mm -hmm. that will work, we can do that. So. I mean, they'd be able to do some things faster, smoother, more efficiently, right. but still follow a similar format. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, the ones that really <coughs> seem to make a lot of money are the ones that are where they control everything. They control the bar, they control the food, they make the food <coughs> there, they either do it themselves or they hire, um, you know, some caterer to come in and do it, and, and, and the venue doesn't cost a lot, and, you know, like Major Me things like that. They make a lot of money at those things, and but they've been doing it for years, so they, they really have their routine down. They have lots of volunteers to sell the silent auction stuff. They have a lot of uh, big uh, live auction things, and, and, and it isn't interrupted by the Oscars that are on. So it, it you know, so they, they make usually, you know, 50 or 100 thousand dollars each time. Well, that would, that that would be, be something that we have to consider too. Yeah. Should we be, change venues? Yeah. It would be tough for us to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we're pretty close to that too. Yeah. So if the venue were the hotel that becomes a partnership, would they be interested in helping us bring in that venue? Right. You mean the Sheraton? Right? The Sheraton? No. The new Pavilion. Oh, okay. They've got a new ballroom. And they were very generous in their donation to us. And they, and so I think we have some, so as a board, Mark and Tim, Tim but Tim is not here. I think we have some serious thinking to do. I agree on, on what we want to do yeah, next year. I agree with that. Not serious thinking. Oh, God. please. <laughs> serious. No frivolous thinking. No, Go ahead, do No, you're right. And I think there's another thing that's also on the agenda. Our Oscar night event, if it's annual, comes pretty much at the same time we start working on the butter and eggs business. We want to do both. Yes. That's, that's, that's connected. And in the fundraising, fundraising scheme for the uh, radio, we don't need a lot of money. $8,000 a year should be able to run the station if we can continue to run it within the existing PCA structure, staff time, like we do use staff time for the fundraising. That's not calculated in anything. Um, that should be an all, all year long fundraising option on the website for PayPal for money to come in. We should all constantly be looking for support. And with the radio, we can also explore uh, underwriting and uh, program sponsorships not as tight as TV. So this event is less the less of a money maker but a publicity gift back to the community. We celebrate the radio at the Oscars with KCA. Uh, we could scale it down so it's not really aimed at raising a lot of money. All that work we did for the baskets maybe was not necessary. Uh, giving away prizes was fun and that could, that could become annual. But and the and the publicity. So the people in Petaluma have a have something that reminds them every year that yes, we need Pedlum and needs to support the radio so we can give it to you. Uh, that messaging. So our next two topics integrate that because we were talking about a retreat, and that retreat could be where this serious thinking comes to a head. And that's well. Shall we? Yes. Are we finished with A? I think so. We beat it to death. <laughs> okay, let's go to B. Possible discussion and. Um, action on the Butter and Eggs Day Parade. Um, I know Cindy has filled out the application and turned it in, so we have to decide what what do we want to do. I'm thinking, my, my thing is, I'm not going to be here for Butter and Eggs Day. So my thinking is, What's the date of Butter and Eggs? It's April 23rd. I'm thinking, I know at one time, we had a limo. Did we not? Yeah. Starting. I don't know. The limo was kind of counterproductive. Didn't didn't read as television. It didn't work. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought it might go with the theme of the unboiled poodies. That it might. Yeah. No, fair. Um, I mean, I was kind of seeing it as being part of. The person who organized that, Marcel, I'm having 
breakfast with her on Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll mention, I'll find out okay. how it works. I know that when Cindy ma made the application, they had, she had to give the size of our float. She took her pickup truck. Oh. So we have a white pickup truck. That That's okay, too. Could run. And yeah, yes. I mean, it doesn't have to be a limbo. I was just thinking it yeah. kind of had the Oscar theme. Yeah, we could, we could. That's that's a good idea. We could take the Oscar theme and run it. Their theme is the train. The choo choo train. The choo choo train. Yeah, the choo -choo train. Mm -hmm. the train is coming to Petaluma all the way. Did she say April twenty third? That's 20 the theme of the parade. Third. April twenty third. Um, I mean, and even by using Cindy's truck, it could be you know a couple bales of hay in the back, and it could be fairly simple yeah. and not big and involved. And yet we still make our presence. We could have our champagne glasses, or you could, whoever rides on the float, get have your the tux, champagne glasses. Keep your tux in the air. <laughs> on a bale of hay. <laughs> <laughs> on a bale of hay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we'll leave that sort of open at this point. Um, I think we have to postpone that. Yeah, but right. I'll, I'll explore the, the, the okay. history, and uh, it's true. Um, will you be able to participate? Sure. If I'm here, I'll bum I'm in. <laughs> Discussion and possible action on the board retreat. We were going to have it at uh -huh. Neil's house. But when, when, when is the date for that? It is the 26th, 26th of this month. That's the last Saturday of the month, right before Easter Sunday. My only concern now is because we have a house on the market, and I don't know whether we're going to take it off the market given that there's a council deed to do some repairs on it. So um, if it's not off the market, if it's off the market, well, if it's on, it's kind of, it's tough because mm -hmm. we have agents coming in and out. And but we could add the value to it. That's true, <laughs> we could. <laughs> but I'm also thinking that we might revise our, you know, we, it's been great the last three years on this. We've been yeah. meeting on this thing regularly. But you're leaving, we've got we've to gotta wean ourselves off your, <laughs> your spacious uh, uh, hey, if generosity. If I still have it, you could always use it. I'm thinking that maybe we just get a, a, a back room at a, Nice restaurant, and we just have a sit down. Or we could even do it here. Really? We could, but I, it, there's something official, yeah. <laughs> official and refreshing to be in, in a new environment. Okay. And because we do have some serious thinking to do about how we organize the annual rhythm of our board activities, it might be good to just have a, a very relaxed, catered or restaurant served big table where we could just hash it out. Talk about it. Less stress on. Can we leave that in your discretion? Uh, well, can we work with Neil to I see what? Okay, so, but we are confirmed on the date. Yes, mm -hmm. March 26th. Do, do you want us there, or can we uh, uh, beg off? No, I don't. Thank you, Neil. I'd love to have you both there, if you can't wait, if you're still in town. Yeah, I'd like to. I, yeah, I'm not leaving until um, April, but sure, okay. I'd like to. So yes, if you can both come to this, and we'd love to have you, and PCA will foot, foot the bill for board development. It's the 26th, right? The 26th. Um, we, could, we could call it a lunch, meet at 11, and finish at 4, and sit around a table, and we discuss how we're going to take the Butter and Eggs uh, Oscar night project forward, and get new board members. And we could invite the board members. Mm -hmm. This is a yeah, right. yeah, at least we're part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe after lunch or something. After lunch. <coughs> or so that we could do have the serious stuff some before discussion. lunch. I was thinking that inviting them before lunch is better. <laughs> well, yeah. They might come. Yeah. Oh, for lunch? <laughs> yeah. Come to, we'll, we'll treat you to lunch. Come and talk to us about the So we should start at, start at 10, invite them for lunch. And then ask them yeah. to leave? No. Um, no, we have a couple of hours before they get there. Oh, oh, okay. We'll start at 10. We'll oh, I see. And then we can all leave together and they don't feel kicked out. Oh, right. I was going to say, I don't want to invite him to lunch today until I'm... If we met at 10, we could invite him at 12, and we'd all be done at 3, or we could let him at 1, so we could have a break before we get there after lunch at 1. I have a potential board member. I have, we'll work on it. I have a potential board member. I will work on it. That's good. And I got, I got one, two, one. Also. Yeah, I have a couple, but um, do, you, 
you want me to just go ahead and I'd love it if you did, and then you can send them to me. I've got the board packet, and uh, I love I love chatting up the the mission. So that's my card. And yeah, I'd love to invite. Okay. okay. We'll meet at ten for a preliminary meeting, strategy meeting, which we could finish at twelve, and then we'll take a break. And at twelve thirty, we'll have guests come, and at one o'clock, we'll have lunch, and that could go for three hours, which is a lot of wine. Okay. I like Neil's wine. Yeah. Yeah. Western European. Stuff. Who wants Cindy's wine? Oh yeah, Maggie got Maggie the got bottle of wine. Holy, yeah, no matter, no, no wonder she loved the thing. And, and, and her son got one of the baskets too. Yeah, and Matt McGuire and his wife each won one. Each one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if the board approves that plan, I will go ahead and find a restaurant. I'm thinking, uh, Flexiano? <laughs> no, not here. Anymore. Uh, you'd have to bring back the clock, buddy. Yeah. You know, we, could we uh, reserve the back room at Volpe's? You know? <laughs> we could. Volpe's is very popular. Uh, maybe um, the other Italian, the Cino Paradiso. Yeah, yeah, nice back room. Yeah, very nice back room. I yeah, think it would be somebody, that's, little little somebody that's less busy on Saturday. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll explore that, and uh, I can use emails to get the... I'll, I'll keep you up to date on what's happening at the house because it, it, it may be available. But well, I think we ought to just give you a break. Yeah. Just right. go with this. Okay. Yeah. okay, sounds good. And then yeah. that way you're not pressured either way. Yeah. Right. Put all the energy into finding one. If you have to do to repairs and you can be busy doing that, or if it's go on the market, and you don't have right. to think about. Oh my gosh. You might enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Tell me the yeah. Chino Paradiso. Yeah. Sounds like a deal. Okay. 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 Um, then number 11 is new business, seeing no items. Um, number 12 is to adjourn. Yeah, We're not adjourn. going to close session, so no. I'll well, second. Someone? I move we adjourn. Okay. At 7. All right. Okay. Turn Thanks, Paul. Paul. The sun's still out.